here and um, resort people building. And it's amazing what's going on mm. in Mexico. Super. Good to know. I was there a couple of years ago. It's, it's uh, uh, fantastic. Yeah, it's just, it's just you're seeing it uh, grow more throughout across from the Baja to Loreto. La Paz is starting having some really great projects going on. And then down here in this region. Okay, we will only wait uh, three minutes more for Sergio because his link is not working, but we are already live in YouTube. So please, uh, if you can mute yourself and we will start in three minutes. Thank you.
Okay, now we are ready. We are going to start. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jimena Sotres. I am a consul for political affairs and economic and tourism promotion at the Consulate General of Mexico in Phoenix. The aim of today's webinar is to formally launch the economic and tourism affairs consular newsletter and discover the new platform Data Mexico released last year by the Ministry of Economy of Mexico. We are honored to be joined today by a group of distinguished guests with knowledge in the Mexico-Arizona relationship. First, I would like to mention Glenn Hammer, President and CEO of the Arizona Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Also, today is joining us Eric Lee, Executive Director of the North American Research Partnership. In third place, I would like to mention Michael D, president and publisher of the Arizona Foothills and In Mexico magazines. From Mexico, we have with us today, Sergio Silva, head of the Global Economic Intelligence Unit at the Ministry of Economy of Mexico, and also Luis Godoy, director general at the Global Economic Intelligence Unit at the Ministry of Economy of Mexico. And our host today, is the Consul General of Mexico in Phoenix, Jorge Mendoza Yescas. Thanks to all of you for participating in today's virtual event. Now, I would like to invite the Consul General to give the opening remarks. Thank you, Jimena. Good afternoon. Uh, as Jimena uh, introduced, uh, introduced me, I'm Jorge Mendoza, the Consul General of Mexico in Phoenix. And I'm very honored to be joined today by uh, this important group of political leaders and players in the business sector in, in Arizona. All of them friends and allies of, of the Mexican consulate. Um, uh, thank you, thank you for your outstanding uh, work in refor reinforcing the uh, political, economic, uh, tourism and social ties between uh, our country, Mexico and the great state of Arizona. Uh, today, the Council General of Mexico is formally uh, launching the first edition of the, our Council Newsletter, uh, which will be uh, an infor informative monthly publication uh, that will serve to well, as a source of information, uh, especially on economic and tourism affairs. And I really want to thank the, the team of the Department of Political, Economic and Tourism Affairs of the Council uh, about, uh, for having this idea and also i want to give a special thanks to this great graphic designer carmen martinez who works with the uh, hispanic chamber of commerce and also karen murphy who who, who helped us to uh, a, a, in the edition of the newsletter uh, thank you thank you very much for your great efforts and as you know mexico is a top trading partner uh, of arizona and as a result of a very strong collaborative efforts. And the history of the relationship uh, between Mexico and Arizona is based on strong economic and geographical and even cultural ties. Governor Doug Ducey uh, has described this uh, relationship as an example of work and stability for the rest of the country. Our cross-border trade and tourism is uh, very important element for our economies and we want to continue to work to improve the flow of goods and services as well as our transportation and infrastructure through the nine points of entry that Arizona and Mexico shared. Uh, another example of the ties is the recent opening of the office, uh, trade office of Arizona in the states of Chihuahua and Guanajuato, which uh, they are uh, additionally to the existing offices that Arizona has in Mexico City and in Hermosillo. And well, tourism is a very important um, area in which uh, Arizona and, and, and Mexico are, are partners. Uh, as we know, the pandemic uh, has, uh, has established uh, many, many restrictions for, for travels in, in you know, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, make uh, more difficult the flow of people between our two parties. But uh, I think we have to work uh, in the near future in order to 
uh, recover this uh, great um, this great um, area with, that we sharing uh, we have in common. As you may know, uh, this year the Congress passed a spending bill that expands the tourism from Mexico to Arizona, which is based in the Southwest Tourism Expansion Act, which is a five-year pilot program that will allow Mexican tourists um, with a border crossing card to travel through, throughout the state without any additional requirement. Uh, President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador understands the importance of, the, of our historic relationship and part of his foreign policy priorities, uh, his administration has working towards a booming economy uh, together with Arizona and make, make it a strong integrated economic uh, region. Um, I, will, I will just mention what we have done in the consulate uh, in the previous year, which was really, really difficult for everyone. All public uh, institutions had in some way to reinvent themselves in order to continue providing their, their services, but also uh, in order to achieve uh, their, their goals. We, uh, we need to uh, create another, uh, other ways in order to continue with this work. We had uh, the opportunity to, to meet with several, several mayors in our consular district more than 20 mayors, more than 20 directors of economic promotion offices uh, in Arizona. Uh, also, we work with the state uh, level uh, officials, uh, as well as many other business uh, players of the private sector. Uh, in this context, uh, well, we began the year with a visit of Mr. Uh, Jesus Seade, uh, one of uh, Mexico's top diplomat in recent history. He was the main negotiator of the USMCA uh, on behalf of Mexico, on behalf of President Lopez Obrador. And he came to visit us in February, just one month or, so, or, or some weeks before the pandemic start. And while this uh, ha is really meaningful in the sense that having this uh, visit from this uh, top official from Mexico, uh, it uh, it tell us about the importance that the Mexico's administration, the federal administration, gives to Arizona and to its relationship with this with this state. Uh, I think um, uh, the uh, there are many many plans. Also, there are some top officials, uh, government officials, in the Foreign Affairs Ministry who are really interested in, in Arizona, and we are really really glad uh, for for that. Um, thank you very much for, for, for joining us uh, today. Uh, what, what I will do now is, is I will proceed um, uh, in order uh, to show you the, the elements of the newsletter. This is a, a really important effort by the consulate, by our allies and collaborators. Uh, it's modest right now, but we uh, are planning that it grows with the uh, contributions of all of you with our speakers and our view viewers at this, at this time. Uh, right now, the first edition, it contains just seven pages, but we are uh, planning to, uh, to make it bigger and, 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 and larger and have the contribution uh, uh, of many, many of, of you, uh, hopefully. We, we have uh, some sections, uh, well, there are two sections, as you know, uh, Mexico used to have this, this agency named ProMexico, which was the main arm uh, of the economic promotion of the Mexican government. Uh, on the side of tourism, uh, we used to have the Council for Tourism Promotion, but now all, uh, all these roles, not the economic promotion, in, in commercial uh, exchange and trade, uh, and the tourism promotion uh, are under the umbrella of the Foreign Affairs Ministry. And now the, cons the consulates, uh, Mexican consulates and embassies around the world, we have these, uh, these duties, uh, these roles. And then we have, uh, we have we to learn on, on, on the way, paving the way on, on these, in these matters, as you know, well then the Mexican Council covers a lot of, of areas, not just um, uh, 
political affairs, but also documentation, community affairs, cultural affairs. And now we, we, we have to learn to, to promote uh, Mexico in economic and tourism uh, ways. And well, Jimena is uh, leading these efforts in, in, in the political and economic and tourism promotion department with a really talented team. And uh, I, will, I would like to, to proceed with the presentation uh, in a so succinct way of, of the newsletter. Okay, thank you for your words, Consul General. Next, I want to invite our special guest to reflect on the importance of the economic and tourism relationship between Mexico and Arizona. Each one will have five minutes. Go ahead with your comments, Glenn. Thank you, Jimena. And uh, Mr. Council General, thank you for, for your opening comments. Uh, I'm delighted to be with you. I hope soon we could all be together in person. And I want to uh, uh, reiterate uh, the Consul General's uh, remarks. Uh, the, the document is, is not just a document with incredibly important information. I'm going to talk about a couple of the points within the document. Uh, and by the way, I have been to Tulum. I, I wish I were there right now, but uh, hopefully soon. Uh, but I, I want to also uh, emphasize how attractive the document is. And uh, when you have Carmen Martinez, she's the best graphic design artist uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, in the in 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 Arizona, if not the world, and it's very important in terms of providing that information. Uh, at the Arizona Chamber, uh, we recognize the importance of of international trade for our economy, and far and away, our most important relationship is is with Mexico. Now, we we love all of the North American countries. Canada is very very important uh, as well, but just the numbers for Mexico. Are, are staggering for, for our economy. Uh, we trade pre-pandemic uh, about $8 billion worth of a year. No, it's really more closer to 10 billion. Uh, far and away our largest uh, export market. And I wanna thank, I know Eric Lee will be speaking. So it's, you know, I appreciate you giving me the chance to speak, but Eric uh, helped put together this great report for the Arizona Mexico Commission and the Arizona Chamber before the USMCA, TEMEC, uh, was ratified. And the, the punchline is that we have 228,000 jobs connected with trade with Mexico and Canada. And our back of the envelope math is that we could quickly get to 250,000 or even 300,000 jobs as the agreement uh, is, is implemented. And one of the important things to, to, to point out is uh, when you think about a relationship with our friend, ally, and neighbor, Mexico, it's a beneficial one for every sector of our economy, but I'll quickly touch on uh, two, two areas. Uh, manufacturing, uh, there's a big worldwide move to bring uh, supply chains uh, back to the North America, particularly from Asia and China into North America. We build things together. So the Lucid uh, Motor uh, uh, factory that's coming up as we speak in Pinal County, it's there because of the supply chain in Mexico. And then you look at other industries like tourism. This is very important to say this during a pandemic. Uh, Arizona has recovered about two thirds of our jobs, but we're still down about 90,000. And a majority of those jobs are in leisure and hospitality. Uh, and a big part of that is because right now we're not, we don't have much international tourism. So what, what I would say is that as we look forward and we always have to look forward is that USMCA, USMCA is great, uh, but, but what do we need going forward? First of all, with the new administration coming in with the Biden-Harris, I, I believe we're not gonna have to worry about tariffs. And that's super important as we build things together because we are opposed to tariffs on our friends, period. Mexico, Canada, we should not be opposing tariffs on our uh, friends, that's not gonna happen. But I think that there's other things that we could do. The tourism, uh, uh, the, the card, that will allow our friends from Mexico to, to travel all through the state. That's really a big deal. And, and I'm, I'm proud that my first stop on the Arizona uh, uh, policy side was with former Congressman Jim Colby. And Congressman Colby was the one that got the original uh, uh, 
proposal through to allow travel to Southern Arizona easier. And he also was one of the parties working on expanding it throughout, uh, throughout the state. Uh, I think that there's more we can do also on the uh, immigration side. You know, we, and, and this is one I hope Eric uh, will help with and others. You know, we updated uh, NAFTA, uh, but we, the TN, the NAFTA visa is still basically stuck 25 years ago. Uh, we should be all about creating better liquidity within the North American market. And in the beautiful document that you put out, you identify that each year, each year, Mexico is graduating 125,000 people in very important fields. So let's expand those 60 year plus uh, categories. Uh, DACA and Dreamers, that's going to be a big uh, issue for us. Uh, there's no excuse, zero excuse for the United States Congress now not to get good immigration reform, starting with DACA and Dreamers, first legalization and then a path to citizenship, but we should be able to, to do more. Uh, my, my, my final comment is that when you take a look at uh, this, this region, the, the mega region, uh, it's, it's one of the major reasons Arizona uh, has been identified by the Wall Street Journal as one of the top five states in the country for growth over the last decade is because of our uh, very positive relationship with Mexico. And this is our governor, Governor Doug Ducey and his Arizona Mexico Commission has done a great job. There's many on this call uh, who also have done a great job. The Arizona Commerce Authority, I, I've noticed Ruth Sobranis is on it, uh, the person with the best voice in Arizona, Mike Patterson's on this call. Uh, we're all in from every level, Republicans, Democrats, independents, we want to expand the relationship and count the Arizona Chamber in to do everything we possibly can to uh, take this relationship to the next level uh, as we get through the pandemic and start visiting in person again. And thank you for the opportunity to speak uh, this evening. Thank you, Glenn, for your remarks. And for sure, the Consulate General will continue to work to promote Mexico and consolidate our relationship with Arizona. The Consular Newsletter will serve that purpose providing key and reliable information to all stakeholders. Now you can proceed with your comments, Eric. Super, thanks so much, Jimena, uh, for this uh, wonderful invitation, this wonderful opportunity to speak today. Um, and uh, thanks so much to Consul General uh, Jorge Mendoza as well. Uh, it's, it's, it's been a while, glad to see you uh, both are still here and that, uh, that everyone's safe uh, also. Very good to share the panel with uh, uh, important practitioners such as Glenn and Michael, uh, as well as uh, Luis and uh, Sergio. I think that, uh, uh, I mean, it takes more than a village. It takes a lot of organizations to make this uh, happen. Uh, really what we're talking about in the nonprofit world, we talk about collective impact models. And, and this involves numerous organizations, each of them specializing uh, in their area. And uh, we're just, we're a small part of that uh, along with, uh, uh, we think an important part of that along with the organizations represented uh, here today. Um, I think that, I mean, what a moment we have here. We have uh, the USMCA having come uh, into force uh, uh, last year, the middle of last year, we've got the uh, pandemic peaking here uh, in Arizona and, and uh, Northern Mexico and hopefully uh, starting to wind down. Hopefully we're getting on the other side of that, uh, of that uh, peak here. Uh, we've also got a new administration in the US with uh, uh, President-elect Biden coming into office, having worked quite a bit on the Latin America portfolio, knows Mexico well, um, and uh, has a lot of reason to do uh, a lot of work, a lot of policy work in the border region, as well as uh, political work. Um, we've also uh, uh, also have a, a binational travel ban uh, uh, against non-essential uh, land uh, crossing travel. Um, and I think that uh, this was uh, unfortunate uh, that the two governments had to uh, resort to this, the three governments actually, uh, and hopefully that will wind down soon. I think what we need is a binational public health plan uh, to reactivate our border, to reopen, uh, our border crossings. We need some kind of a plan, uh, some kind of a, a, a phased rollout there. And I'm hoping that uh, uh, SRE and uh, some of the other key agencies in the US and Mexico uh, can work on that. And um, 
Also, congratulations uh, to the consulate for getting this uh, newsletter out. We've been talking about this for a while. I know this has been a goal uh, of yours for a while. Uh, let's all make a resolution right now to spend more time with newsletters and less time on social media. Uh, that's, uh, I, I hope we can all do that this year. I, I really like newsletters, uh, not so big on social media. Um, finally, my congratulations to Sergio Silva and Luis Godoy for their important work on the Data Mexico uh, initiative. So, so why are these initiatives uh, important? And, and I think First of all, anything that sheds light on Mexico is important for stakeholders in the United States. Uh, Mexico is not well understood uh, in the United States. Um, it is its own entity. And as I always say, it is not some Mexicanized version of the United States. It's, it's maybe a first cousin of the Latino community in the United States. It's usually not what we think it is. And it usually defies the conventional uh, wisdom. Uh, it is contrary to that same conventional wisdom, uh, most certainly not a poor country, but rather a middle income country with significant wealth and significant inequality uh, between regions and socioeconomic classes. Sound familiar? Uh, the study of Mexico, I would, I would also say, is not particularly advanced in the United States. Knowledge about Mexico is usually hyper-fragmented, uh, and understudied in our universities, which I would say constantly downplay the importance of what academics uh, uh, term area studies. They really don't like that concept uh, within uh, our universities. Um, I hope that Sergio and Luis later can give us uh, their thoughts on their audience for this important initiative, uh, as well as plans for uh, future development. What I thought was really interesting um, with Data Mexico was that uh, was the focus on inclusion and diversification of the Mexican economy. I know that's a, a, a very important objective for the Lopez Obrador uh, administration. I think it's a, a, an important frame for the project and it's a great segue into the piece that I contributed to the consulate's uh, inaugural newsletter. Uh, several years ago, we reorganized our work under the umbrella of an initiative that at that time we were calling NAFTA for the rest of us, uh, which is a bit silly uh, of uh, a, a title, but really can the idea that these trade agreements, uh, while very powerful aspects of public policy and international relations always create winners and losers. Now, what's, what's really interesting about the USMCA uh, is that it has a chapter on small and medium-sized businesses, which are called PIMIS in Mexico. This is buried in the document. It's like chapter 25 or something, but I, I'm, I'm really excited about this because uh, this is the first time that the U.S. has had this in a trade agreement that it has been uh, a party to. Um, uh, the language was borrowed uh, pretty much word for word, close, closely, almost word for word from the Trans-Pacific Partnership uh, ag Agreement language. Um, and uh, basically, uh, it's, it's a short chapter. It says that the three governments realize the importance of small businesses to the North American economy. They promise to set up mechanisms of dialogue on this. Um, and that the concept appears throughout the document, which it actually does. This may not seem like much, but this is exactly the kind of thing that could grow in importance uh, over the years. Uh, and finally, I think uh, in terms of operationalizing this part of the agreement with respect to small businesses, I think the burden really falls on government agencies like SRE, uh, Economia, the US Department of Commerce, Commercial Service, SBA, Arizona Commerce Authority, as well as Chambers of Commerce and economic development organizations of all kinds. It's really up to these groups to make this happen. I think if it does happen, it could be a real game changer instead of talking about uh, a few thousand large multi or a few hundred or a couple of thousand large multinational corporations that take advantage of North American trade. We could be talking about tens of thousands of uh, businesses of all size, of all sizes that can be taking advantage of North American uh, trade. And that, that's just a quantum difference. Um, thanks again for the invitation. Uh, and I look forward to uh, Michael's comments and the presentation. Thank you for your great remarks, Eric. And uh, talking about the USMCA, 
Thank you very much for collaborating in the first edition of our newsletter. And in 2020, we held several webinars about the USMCA in the consulate, where we discussed key provisions of the agreement. In fact, we organized a table of analysis of the important role of women, especially Hispanic women, and their opportunities of growth in the international market in the context of the USMCA. So thank you for your remarks. Now we are going to proceed with Mr. Michael D. Please, uh, Michael, give, you, give us uh, your comments. Well, hi everyone. Thank you again, General Counsel. It's a pleasure being here considering how much I personally, my wife personally love Mexico. Uh, we're in Tulum, I think most of you know that right now. And uh, the good news for Mexico, um, uh, just a little background because everyone might not know what we do. We have a publication called AZ Foothills, started it 23 years ago in Arizona to promote more tourism for Arizona. It's the third most visited website, uh, has the most uh, following on social media and Instagram. Anyways, about five or six years ago, we kept on going to Mexico and going, I love it, why not share it? And a gentleman that lived in uh, Baja Sur said, why don't you start at Arizona Foothills for Mexico? Anyways, what he wanted to do was just for Cabo and Baja Sur. I said, no, we're doing a completely across Mexico. And what we're doing is more about not just saying well, here's the best places to go eat and uh, stay. We did start doing that. Now we're finding out that a lot of Americans want to go and they want to give back and vice versa. Last night I had dinner with a gentleman out of Mexico City. He owns the majority of the land here in Tulum and they're developing it and going very green. Um, Mexico is going to have the first official green school in the entire North America opening up in the next 18 months. So there's a lot of synergy that we want to give back. And like this newsletter is great. Each Monday we're, we send out to over 90,000 subscribers, people interested in travel to Arizona, we're going to include this and include a lot more. Uh, we're finding out for destinations too, a lot of people from Arizona will go to Mexico. And one thing, so you guys know, since COVID, Mexico has done a great job here. Anytime you go to a grocery store, you take your temperature, you, you know, get your hands clean, you will step on mats. But the tourism, I, I'll tell you, you, there might be a ban. Everyone's coming to Mexico. And uh, it's, it's the, the second terminal now open in Cancun and in Cabo. I'm in con contact with the top resorts, the people that live there. And tourism has come back to lots of regions of Mexico because they're, they have good procedures in place but people feel safe here. One thing I, I found, and this is really important, as you probably know this, a lot of people will ask us, is it safe to go to Mexico? Number one question by far. And I get that asked by a lot of people in Arizona, is it safe? And that's when, when people ask, and then they go, what areas, where can I take kids? Where should we get married? And we did, I did get married in Mexico. So I'm just a big fan of Mexico. I love Mexico and I, I like listening to what everyone has, but we we're just here to build the awareness of Mexico. And we have so many friends now in Mexico that want to come to Arizona and have not been too. So I'm really glad that we're invited to be part of this and we have a lot to offer and listen and learn from everyone. So thanks again. And if you have any questions, we're, I'm here too. Thank you, Mike, for your comments. Um, in 2020, the Mexican consulate worked to foster our tourist industry through, the, through different activities in the midst of the pandemic. We held official meetings with 12 state ministries of tourism in Mexico. And as a result of such meetings, Arizona was identified as a very attractive market. As a matter of fact, in October, Southwest Airlines established in Phoenix, one of its international getaways when it added the route from Phoenix to Puerto Vallarta and Cabo San Lucas. Shortly after that, they announced that they will start offering direct flights to Cancun also, in December, American Airlines started services between Phoenix and La Paz and Loreto, Baja California, two beauty beautiful cities located in the Sea of Cortez. With these new flights, now we have 12 air routes between Mexican destinations and Arizona. Thanks to all of you for sharing your knowledge with us. 
Now we will start with the presentation of the consular newsletter by the Consul General. Thank you, Jimena. So I'm just waiting for the slides to be shown on the, on the screen. Well, uh, as you may see, this is a kind of a statement that I, I, I'm making in, in the letter I, I wrote for the, for the newsletter. So the goal of this uh, newsletter is to support the promotion efforts on, on these two fields that are carried out by the Council General through its Department of Political Affairs, Economic and Tourism promotion. And well, the newsletter will be published monthly we um, we may have it twice a month, hopefully, uh, but for now uh, we we will publish in it uh, just once a month, and we hope it contains um, valuable information on trade and business opportunities between Arizona and, and Mexico, and well, we hope uh, that this news newsletter becomes a meeting point for the business community in Arizona, and for those involved in, in strengthening this relationship. The, um, the page one, which, which you can see on, on the screen, um, on the left uh, part of this page, uh, we can find uh, a message for from myself, the Consul General of Mexico, Jorge Mendoza, and I just explain um, uh, in a very succinct uh, way uh, the goals of, of this newsletter. Uh, also, we, we can see that um, uh, we uh, uh, we have a section that is called upcoming events, uh, which is aimed to promote the, the future events in Mexico that are related with economic and tourism sectors. Each each event uh, has a hyperlink that can be clicked in, and then uh, you will be directed to the the proper website. Also, the the main section is choose Mexico. It's a uh, it, it will contain information about. Uh, a, a investment in Mexico and the things or policies that the uh, Mexican government uh, is taking at that moment. In the second page, uh, well, the main goal is uh, to inform about the policies or actions uh, taken also the, uh, by the federal government or, the, or, or well, by the private sector that could impact the Mexican economy. Among the topics uh, that could be covered in this uh, page, we uh, we can see fiscal policy or updates in the labor market, but also the response uh, to the to the COVID nineteen pandemic. Uh, well, in, in this edition, as you see, we can see this uh, COVID nineteen alert signals. Uh, it's the the, uh, the life system that the federal government is implementing in Mexico in order to uh, make aware the population and investors and any people uh, interested in and about the levels of um, the levels in, in which the pandemic could be. Each state also uh, is implementing uh, this uh, red uh, this light uh, system. In page three. Uh, we will focus on providing uh, useful tools uh, uh, to the readers on the steps to expand uh, a business uh, to Mexico. Uh, in this particular edition, we have included some of the requirements that we need to invest in, in Mexico. And the page four, well, the, the main goal is to highlight the importance, the importance of uh, the relationship uh, between Mexico and, and Arizona. We, we will have the, the expert uh, opinion uh, uh, from uh, some, somebody from the academic or the economic sector. In, in this edition, we are really happy to have the, co the collaboration of uh, Eric Lee, who, who's writing, who, who wrote uh, this article for us uh, about the USMCA. And th thank you very much, uh, Eric, for collaborating with, with, with us in, in this edition. Page five. This page is uh, we uh, make the transition to the tourism section. Uh, as you can see, uh, we uh, we are reporting important uh, news on the tourism sector in Mexico. Uh, for anyone looking to visit uh, anytime soon, Mexico uh, uh, can see uh, find or find a useful information about uh, potential trip uh, there in Mexico. 
So in this, in this edition, uh, we uh, provide with information about the guidelines to the tourism, tourism sector, uh, the implementation that they are uh, doing in, in, in order to receive visitors uh, in a safe environment. If you see Sello de Calidad, Punto Limpio is a certification implemented by the federal government to the all touristic uh, areas and hotels and places. So that uh, uh, give us a certainty that uh, that place, it would be a safe, uh, safe place, safe, safe area to, to visit. In page C, uh, six, sorry, uh, as I previously mentioned, uh, we, we have been in contact with uh, several multiple tourism boards in Mexico at the state level. In this occasion, we have the collaboration of, of the people from Estapa, Cihuatanejo. Uh, they provide us uh, brief information about the culture, about the activities that anybody who, who visits them uh, can, can, can do there. Uh, uh, well, in page seven, we have, um, in, uh, we, we talk about the attractions uh, at the state uh, level. In, in this occasion, Quintana Roo send us uh, this uh, information about what they, they would like to promote. Uh, we have the treasures in Mexico, Riviera Maya, uh, Bacalar Lagoon, Cenotes, uh, Tulum Ruins. Uh, I think it's, uh, well, for me, it's very attractive since I, I'm, I'm just watching the, the, the pictures and actually I would like to go there as, as soon as possible. Also, it contains uh, the hyperlinks of the, of the of our economic affairs and tourism affairs website uh, of the council, we we are actually working on on improving these websites. Uh, it's a really good work um, done by Jimena and Ricardo, uh, but uh, we 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 will work on, on on getting more information and and making it more attractive visually for for all of you. And, well, in, in this uh, edition, uh, we have just seven pages. It's a um, modest uh, newsletter in some sense uh, because it's not too large, but we're planning to uh, to make it a little bit longer. And we, we would like to include a page, a special page or two pages uh, uh, for Arizona's people, maybe as you know, this newsletter will be delivered uh, in Mexico to, to uh, important key players in the economic and tourism uh, sectors. So maybe you are interested in, in sending and promoting someone in specific in Arizona. I think it will be, will be very important you make contact with us and share that information with us. And then we can include it in, in this, in this is a special section that we are uh, including in the next uh, edition. Uh, also, we are planning to have um, uh, more uh, expert opinions. Uh, we would like to give the chance uh, to any any uh, uh, player in the business sector to collaborate with this uh, newsletter. In the next edition, we are really, really happy to have the collaboration of Mr. Glenn Hammer, our friend, uh, the president, uh, of the Arizona Chamber of Commerce, who's here, uh, one of our speakers. And subsequently, we wanna have uh, also the, the chance to have uh, many, many contributors. And well, this is, well, it's uh, the bulletin. Uh, thank you, Jimena. And well, I, I'm really looking forward to, to hearing the presentation from Luis and Sergio uh, from the Minister of Economy of Mexico about the very, very useful and interesting platform, Data Mexico. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Consul General. Well, the Ministry of Economy of Mexico recently launched the platform Data Mexico. Please let me introduce the two representatives of the Ministry of Economy that are joining us today, and we'll be talking about the interesting platform. I will start by introducing Sergio Silva. Sergio Silva Castañeda is head of the Economic Intelligence Unit at the Ministry of Economy of Mexico. 
This unit is in charge of the strategy of attraction of foreign direct investment, as well as promoting Mexican exports by focusing on global value chains and micro, small and medium enterprises, all in coordination with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Dr. Silva has a BA in economics by the Center for Research and Teaching in Economics, CIDE, for its acronym in Spanish and a PhD in economic history by Harvard University. He was in charge of the, of the Mexico and Central America program of the David Rockefeller Center for Latin American Studies of the same university. He's a specialist in comparative Latin America and Mexican history. In addition, he was an associate professor in the Mexico Autonomy Institute of Technology, ITAM, for its acronym in Spanish. And he was the director of the international relations program at the same university. In 2018, he was invited by Dr. Marquez Colin to be part of the new government. Also from the Ministry of Economy, we have with us Luis Godoy. Luis Godoy Rueda is general director at the Global Economic Intelligence Unit at the Ministry of Economy of Mexico where he coordinates the data and economic intelligence team. He earned a master of public administration at Columbia University in New York, specializing in economic development. He has studied economics and political science at ITAM. He has more than eight years of experience in the public and private sector and in international organizations. The new area in charge of him in the Ministry of Economy has just presented Data Mexico, a platform that will be a new paradigm in the integration, visualization, and distribution of data in Mexico for decision-making on commercial, industrial, and economic promotion policy. Thank you both for being with us today. Now I will give the floor to Sergio and Luis. Thank you very much, uh, Jimena. Uh, good evening to everyone. I hope you're hearing me well. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you. And I would like to start by thanking Consul Jorge Mendoza for the invitation to participate in this uh, webinar. Uh, for the Ministry of the Economy, it's always a pleasure to work uh, with our diplomatic representations abroad uh, and also to get to meet and share these events with the distinguished guests and friends of Mexico that spoke before me. Uh, thank you, Michael. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you, Eric. And Eric particularly made me think about my previous life when he was talking about uh, the, um, the fact that uh, Mexico is not well understood in the U.S. I think the same happens on the other way around. In, in Mexico, the U.S. are not well understood. And I have to say that I'm very proud that I, I, I usually brag about the fact that I might be one of the very few people who have taught Mexican history in the US and US history in Mexico. I think it's part of the effort and part of my goal life to help to that mutual uh, understanding. Uh, I won't take much time. I just want to give you a short introduction to the things that we do in the Ministry of Economy in terms of economic promotion and to briefly describe the strategy we have been following for the past uh, two years. Uh, the first thing to say is that the need to attract investment and promote exports to support industrialization, economic diversification, and the structural transformation remains a priority for the Mexican government. Uh, in order to increase our com competitiveness uh, in the global markets and to improve the life of Mexican men and women, our country keeps working to diversify, innovate, innovate and include new sectors and regions into the global uh, economy. Uh, the area I led, the Global Economic Intelligence Unit, was created two years ago with the idea of using the power of data science to generate intelligence that allows the Mexican government to make better economic decisions and to provide information to uh, uh, entrepreneurs uh, interested in investing in Mexico or Mexican entrepreneurs interested in exploring the global market. More and better intelligence would result in precise actions to attract new investments and trade uh, and trade more elaborate products with other countries. And that's basically our goal. Uh, to achieve this goal, everyday cooperation and coordination with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is essential. We rely on our embassies, consulates, to be the first contact with companies wanting to buy Mexican products or uh, invest in our country. We also rely on them 
to help us put in action the promotion strategy in the direction in which the data and the economic intelligence analysis tells us we have to go. If we focus our resources in a specific sectors or in a specific parts of the value chains, our economy has very chances of improving people's lives. And in this matter, the consulate in Phoenix has been a great ally to us. We have worked together for the past two years, supplying them information, documents, and tools to help companies in Arizona uh, make informed decisions to expand to Mexico or to increase trade, particularly with Mexican SMEs. Uh, and the consulate has helped us reach U.S. companies for matchmaking events and has, and has transmitted to us the request to find business partners in this side of the border. And in addition to that everyday work, the initiative of this particular consulate to find new ways in which we can keep working in economic promotion has been outstanding. The newsletter they have presented us all today is a tool to reach even more people and let them, uh, let them know what Mexico is doing, why are we a reliable business partner, uh, and how can both countries work to prosper together in these difficult times of global pandemic. We certainly share with the consulate the idea of delivering information to companies everywhere as a way to help them make informed decisions uh, about Mexico. Accessible data, explained procedures, ex experts' opinions, and economic or touristic suggestions are all important ways of reaching new investors, consumers, and visitors. At the Ministry of the Economy, uh, we have also made it a priority to make economic information as available to, to everyone as possible so that, that every business, regardless of size, or sector can make informed decisions at no cost. That's why we have developed a series of digital tools and platforms to make easier, make it easier for everyone to access that uh, information. Uh, out of that catalog, uh, Data Mexico is certainly the most ambitious project we have put into practice. And now it is also available in English. We, uh, Data Mexico was first available about five months ago. And a few weeks ago, we finally got the English version online. So before Luis Godoy can explain you its uses and benefits, just, just let me congratulate once again, Consul Jorge Mendoza, Jimena Sotres, Joel Ostos, Ricardo Reyes, and everyone involved in this newsletter project, which we will follow closely. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Sergio. And now Luis, if you want to continue, please. Great, uh, thank you. Thank you again, uh, General Counsel. Thank you to all the team of uh, the General Counsel at the Phoenix. Jimena, we know you're a huge supporter of Data Mexico and thank you uh, to the rest of the team of the Consulate. And of course, thank you, Eric, Glenn, Michael for all the comments you made. Um, I will try to explain and I will start by sharing my screen. Um, what's the purpose and also the benefits that we think Data, Mex Data Mexico has for, for you. Um, but before that, let me, uh, I don't know if you're already, um, my screen has been shared. Can you see it? Yes, we can see your screen. Great, so um, before I go uh, into, the, into detail uh, with Data Mexico, let me emphasize the four mandates and, and uh, why we think Data Mexico, but also other platforms that we're developing um, uh, are part of the strategy to, for, to, to accomplish these four mandates that we have at, at the Ministry of Economy. The first one is to promote, to attract, and to retain, and I would also add to diversify foreign direct investment. We are uh, executing uh, investment promotion policies and designing new programs to contribute to the increase of, of the competitiveness of competitiveness of companies. And we're interested in, in establishing a conversation and projects around promotion of attraction uh, uh, investment. The second one is uh, the foreign trade promotion. Um, we are in charge of the policy to promote Mexican exports, specifically uh, SMEs, uh, MIPIMES, we, that we call here in Mexico. Uh, the third mandate that we have at this unit is uh, to inform and specifically to, to provide economic intelligence. Also, specifically, we're interesting that more SMEs uh, um, have uh, more economic intelligence information so, so they can uh, inform better decision. And finally, we have uh, 
the fourth one to strength uh, supply chain, we are uh, actually doing a lot of activities to define criteria, criteria and actions to introduce Mexican companies, also specific, specifically SMEs, uh, into national, but specifically into global supply chain. Uh, in this context is that we develop this strategy that Sergio, Sergio mentioned that uh, where we are basically trying to use data science uh, and economic complexity, with, which is a specific methodology that we're trying to use to attract quality FDI and focus investment in a more accurate and effective way in Mexico. Um, today, I'm going to be able to present Data Mexico, but of course, if you're interested in, uh, in also other topics around uh, economic complexity and also the documents that we're doing uh, in, in terms of economic intelligence, international trade intelligence, and of course, foreign direct investment intelligence, please stay in touch with us, with us so we can provide the specific information uh, because uh, that's what we do. We, we provide a specific analysis for companies, for uh, local governments, of course, and, and different economic allies. So uh, the context behind, behind the Data Mexico, and um, this is important uh, for you and of course for us to explain the, the, the origin of, of, of Data Mexico in the context of a country where data platforms and of course uh, the open government uh, agenda uh, is important and uh, as it is in the US. Um, we have in Mexico and most countries have open data platforms and, and they're important, but uh, they're not enough. Uh, we think that data should be useful and should be presented in ways that actually inform uh, the decision or the process of, of decision-making. And, uh, and also we think that uh, data governance is important. Um, Another problem that, that we identify uh, when we arrive at the government was that there are large volumes of, uh, of data uh, in different offices and different uh, agencies, and, um, but they are separated. What we are trying to do in Data Mexico is to integrate data and to integrate information. Uh, so that's one important thing. Another important thing that we had identify and that was part of the idea to uh, developing uh, Data Mexico was that economic actors uh, have uh, limited access to, to information. And normally they have access to a couple of, of, of analysis. Uh, Pro Mexico, for Pro Mexico the, the economic promotion agency that was um, in charge before of this strategy used to present information you know, in PDFs or in, in ways that uh, were limited to specific actors. So uh, there's a need and Data Mexico is part of this uh, agenda to democratize uh, information through platforms. Uh, another important problem that, uh, that we identify uh, in the creation of Data Mexico is a little collaboration to share information between agencies inside the government, but also between the private sector, NGOs, and so on. Uh, Data Mexico is a platform where not only the government can share information, but, and this is important, but also the private sector can, al can also use Data Mexico as a platform to share data. Um, another important thing that is uh, huge in, in Data Mexico uh, is the visualizations. Uh, other platforms in Mexico, but of course also in other countries, even in the US, um, they, there are not enough visualizations to understand economic problems. And Data Mexico has millions of visualizations in, in more than 30,000 profiles, as, as I will present uh, you later. Um, but, uh, but this is a key part uh, of Data Mexico. Another important problem that we identify, identified in, in, in the creation of, of Data Mexico uh, were the technical barriers for the integration of different databases. And if you want to have a conversation or to understand a little bit more the technology behind Data Mexico, we, we are happy to share this information. So in this context is that we created Data Mexico. And here is the important part. Data Mexico was designed for, um, for a specific agenda. And we're highly interested in Data Mexico be a useful tool specifically for the foreign direct investment uh, attraction policies and the economic or specifically the export promotion policies. But of course, Data, data Mexico, it's more than that because the data that we have can also be useful for other policies. But the main goal behind Data Mexico is to be useful uh, on this very specific economic promotion uh, agenda. And um, that's what, I'm going to try to explain today. So uh, the the structure of Data Mexico um, is 
is a, is a, is a deep swallow. Data Mexico is available. First of all, uh, Sergio, Sergio already mentioned this. Uh, Data Mexico is already available in English. Of course, it's also available in Spanish. Um, and we present information basically in five categories. Cities or the geographic uh, category, in industries, employment, products, and institutions. Uh, we hope that little by little, we're gonna add more uh, categories in this structure, but these five uh, categories are the main. And you will find on these categories more than 30,000 uh, data profiles. The concept of data profiles is important in Data Mexico because it's the place where we integrate all the data and all the visualizations. Also, it's important to mention that for this first uh, beta version, we have a special section for economic complexity I don't think we're gonna have the time to explain um, what we are doing with economic complexity, but uh, also if you're interested in, 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 in the economic complexity agenda that we have, uh, please stay in touch. And of course we have a section of COVID-19 uh, and this tells you a little bit the, uh, how Data Mexico is part of, the, of what is happening around the world and, and, and in Mexico. We want, to we want to present information and data that is useful uh, in the context that we are living, and of, co of course, COVID is is one of the main topics and and issues that we have right now around the world and in Mexico. Uh, this is uh, one of the key elements of Data Mexico. Uh, we're trying to show data on the more granular level with a high degree of resolution, and um, of course, when when you find uh, when you search uh, of, for information, uh, you normally find uh, information, you know about the country or perhaps about Sonora, the state. But we're trying to go deep and we're trying to show information of the whole municipalities in Mexico and of course the metro areas. Uh, the same um, perspective is in, in, in industries. We're actually using the North American um, uh, industrial catalog here and you will find information for sectors, subsectors and industrial branches. Also, uh, the same perspective for employment with different granularity behind the group, the subgroup and the occupations, which is very specific information about employment. Uh, the same uh, in products, chapter, two digits, four digits, six digits. We're using here the harmonized systems of the, uh, that basically show the information of international commerce. Finally, we have at this first version information about high uh, education institutions. Uh, you'll find information for uh, all the universities that we have in Mexico. And I actually have a couple of examples to show you this. Um, for this year, for 2021, we're planning to, uh, to introduce new data, new data sets, but also new profiles. We're, we're trying, uh, this is basically the agenda for 2021. And um, it's, uh, first of all, it's important for us to show you this because feedback will be important. Uh, Data Mexico is based on, on, on its users, and uh, we're interested also uh, on, on, the, on the data that you think would be useful for you so that we can show it and we can develop different visualizations on Data Mexico with the data sets that you want. But for 2021, we, we were planning to introduce information about companies, company profiles. Uh, the economic census uh, provides interesting information about environmental certifications, technology, uh, training, uh, uh, financial inclusion, and so on. Uh, we're, also, we're also adding information about international trade and FDA uh, for uh, foreign direct investment. We're trying to add also country profiles so you can find actual information from the perspective of Mexico, but uh, from other countries, specifically on data, of course, of, of, of trade, of uh, investment, but also uh, migration, which was one of the topics that uh, were mentioned before. And uh, we have interesting data sets about industrial parks, national suppliers, and so on. But before um, I, I go on to this question, let me show you live uh, the data Mexico. So I'm going to change to my, uh, I don't know if you can see there my, my screen. Are you, so this is the- Yes, we, we can see your screen. You, are you- are you seeing Data Mexico or, or the presentation? The presentation, Luis. You, I okay. think you have to. One second. Exactly. There you are. 
So this is the this is the main um, landing the landing page of Data Mexico. Uh, you of course can find Data Mexico to this link, datamexico.org, and here you can switch it to English. So uh, what we have here is the profiles. If you go to the profile section, you also can find this section on on the explore section on this menu. You'll find uh, this. Uh, this search engine, which is which I think it's really useful, but uh, it will help you to understand the different profiles that we have. So if, let's say if you want information, I don't know about the aerospace uh, industry, you 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 can find here cities and places. Well, you don't find anything, but you can find products, industries, and institutions related to the uh, output that you want. So. Um, Let's say that you want information about Nogales, which is one of the municipalities that uh, I know it's really important for, for the state of Arizona because uh, is the main uh, municipality between, between Sonora and, um, and, the, and the trade and for trade and, and many other economic activities. So, so you go directly, you can go here, Nogales, you, you search Nogales, you will find the municipality I have already here. Uh, and you'll find a profile where, where you will find information, uh, well, first of all, about COVID-19, you'll find information about credits, economy, employment, equity, and so on. So let's go to the visualizations that we have here in Data Mexico. First of all, as you can see, um, this is the evolution of, of COVID-19 cases, specifically in Nogales. If you want muni municipal level uh, data of COVID-19, you'll find here in da Data Mexico, but you can uh, you can see from here one uh, the benefits that Data Mexico has, or that this type of data platform has. For instance, you can you can play with with the with with these visualizations. You can change from cases to uh, to, to different rate, the logarithmic the logarithmic scale, and so on. And of course, one of the key elements in in the, in all the Data Mexico uh, visualization is the possibility, first of all, to um, to download the data, you can of course download all the visualization and all the data that you have. So you can use it in another software. Of course, you can use an IPA that we prepared. So you can use it on a specific, uh, let's say apps or different uh, platforms that you're developing. And of course you can uh, use the image and share uh, this information on your social media. So um, you'll have, we have a lot of, of visualizations. This is uh, a section that we created about credits. We are uh, developing the Ministry of Economy is developing uh, with uh, the federal government uh, a program of financial support uh, on this COVID-19 crisis. So we're showing the data. This tells you also uh, this perspective of, of transparency and opening data that normally is not available. But then you have this uh, very interesting section, I think, of international sales. sales. This is specifically what Nogales is selling to the rest of the world, in this case, as you can see, there's a huge concentration in the United States, of course, but uh, and, and, and this is uh, mainly manufacturing uh, products. You can go to detail. I'm not going to go to detail, but if you want to go to detail, visit Data Mexico. Of course, there's also the perspective of the imports that Nogales is making. Uh, this is more diversified, as you can see, uh, the net international trade and so on. We have information of FDI, and this is important. Uh, uh, the general council was showing information of the of the RENIE, which is the national uh, re registry of, of foreign direct investment in Mexico. We are using part of the data that they are producing, uh, and we're showing it here in Data Mexico, the origin of the FDI, and so on. There are a lot of the, uh, data visualizations, so I'm going to go quickly on this. But here, let's remember, we are in Nogales, Sonora. This is the economic. Um, economically active population. If you want to understand a little bit more employment in different regions in Mexico, you'll find for each of the municipalities and each of the states. Also salaries and workforce, uh, salaries by occupation. Uh, there's a lot of information here. This is a, an important one because we are adding more information about COVID-19 and the pandemic, but also from the economic perspective. Here you can find the employment during the COVID-19 pandemic, where you can see how this is evolving also in the states of, of in the different states of Mexico and so on. We have a section of uh, equity where you can find the the income um, inequality um, 
in this case, the Gini coefficient data per municipality, and so on. I'm going to go um, now. I'm going to go to another profile so you can understand also the different perspective on, on let's say, an industry. If you want to search, I know that um, Arizona and specifically Phoenix has an important aerospace uh, company and companies around around this. So let's say that uh, an investor of, uh, of this area is trying to understand a little bit more the aerospace uh, industry in Mexico. Uh, let's say maybe they're, they want to understand a little, a little bit more um, the, the, the foreign direct investment in this specific industry group. So you go to the profile of, in this case, aerospace manufacturing parts, and you'll find an overview of, of, of this industry. This is the industry group 3364. And you'll see information about the gross domestic product. As you can see, it has evolved uh, over, over the years in Mexico. This is the, the, the COVID crisis, but it, it has been growing a lot in, in Mexico, the aerospace industry. You can find here the economic units that we have, so you can understand how it, it is distributed. Of course, uh, Querétaro is an important hub, but also you have Sonora and Baja California. Um, here you can find the detail of the municipalities that um, are part of the industry of aerospace, the companies, the size of the companies, of course, the, the foreign direct investment, as you can see, you can see the details of the type of investment and so on per state, and of course, the origin of the, of the, of the investment. Finally, this is the interesting section for us. We have a specific um, data and visualizations of complexity. This is very important for us at the ministry because this is a quick way to understand the product capabilities of the regions in Mexico. And for investors, this is hugely, this is very important because um, this is a way that they can identify quickly places, in this case, regions or states, maybe not the same states that they are already producing, in this case, aerospace units, but other states that have already the capabilities and they can uh, specialize um, on, on this industry. In this case, as you can see, Nuevo León, Jalisco, Aguascalientes, these are states that have a high relatedness or affinity on this industry and uh, they present an important opportunity in this sector. So remember, you can find this for each of the industries and each of the sectors uh, of all the industries that are available in the, in the North American uh, industry catalog. But now let's see if you can if you want to find information about a product uh, because you're more interested not in the industry but in a very specific product uh, let's say uh, tomato um, you go directly and and this is a different type of profile you'll find information about trade international sales international purchases or imports and you'll find information about the trade balance of this specific product tomatoes uh, the net international trade how, uh, as you can see, we export more the, uh, in, from the perspective of Mexico, of course. The market concentration uh, per state, as you can see here, Sinaloa is a huge actor in the, in the production of, of tomatoes and exchange by territory and so on. So this is uh, some of the benefits that we think Data Mexico has. You can visualize data in a very granular level this is, of course, information that is uh, updated uh, regularly, uh, and uh, I, and of course, you 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 have the confidence that this data is uh, is reviewed and is verified uh, from the Ministry of Economy. But now, finally, let's say let's think about the example that we were mentioning before. The, this investor that wants wants to understand a little bit more the market of engineers or um, or the schools that actually provides uh, some, I don't know, let's say uh, aeronautic engineering, because we were talking about uh, aerospace investment. So you go to the search engine and you type aero and you'll find institutions. We have two important institutions, one in Querétaro, which is the Universidad Aeronautica de Querétaro. It's a highly specialized university and you'll see data in the same perspective. We integrate data in this case of these universities uh, about where and which uh, majors we have um, about in this case, aeronautical engineering, design, uh, technical colleges, so on. 
Um, this is an interesting map because as you can see, the enrolled um, students are from all over the country, uh, even though this uh, university is in the state of Querétaro. And of course, you, you can find, this is a small, a very small university. You'll find information about the big universities in Mexico, uh, the Politecnico Nacional, UNAM, uh, the, the state universities that are highly important in each state of, of Mexico. So uh, let me finish showing you these two um, specific dashboards that we created uh, for, for this version of Data Mexico. One is, is, is a COVID-19 dashboard here. This is the same uh, data, of course, that we are presenting. This is daily updated data from the Ministry of Health. Uh, if you want to understand, let's say, uh, we're, we you were talking a lot about tourism, and and of course, this is important information for tourism. You can you can play a little bit with the data so you can understand how the COVID nineteen crisis is hitting uh, in the different states. Let's say, let's compare Oaxaca with the Estado de Mexico. And you'll see, um, you know, this uh, this data. We have more, but now let me show you finally the economic complexity dashboard. Uh, this is very important for us because economic complexity, as I told you before, uh, it's a way for us to um, inform investors and also uh, uh, local governments and other economic actors, so they can identify opportunities not only from the perspective of regions, but also from the perspective of which specific products. So we developed this economic complexity dashboard where you can actually create, you, create your own uh, economic complexity index. You can use different types of geographical levels, different levels of industry, of course, different um, types of measure by companies or by employees, and of course, different data sets. Normally we present this data on the state level, but of course you can see the economic complexity per municipality. So you can also understand, understand the, the huge capabilities that each of the municipalities in Mexico have. So uh, I invite you to, to visit Data Mexico. I invite you to, um, to, to spend time, as, as Eric mentioned in, at the beginning, less time in social media, more time in, in, in Data Mexico, and of course, more time in the, in the, in the newsletters. But in this case, I also invite you to, uh, to search a little bit more about economic complexity and how it is useful for uh, the agenda that we have in common between the United States uh, and Mexico. Uh, we believe that uh, all of these, the digital platforms, economic complexity, the economic intelligence is important to, uh, to the relationship, the economic relationship between, uh, between our countries. And specifically, as you mentioned, and this very important moment that we're living uh, around USMCA, or Temec, and um, I think uh, that's that's my presentation. I don't know if you have questions. I will be happy to answer questions about Data Mexico. Thank you very much. Thanks for your presentation, Luis. This platform is a great tool for us, and of course, for the stakeholders in Arizona that work every day to strengthen the economic relationship. And now, lastly, I want to invite the Consul General to give the closing remarks. Thank you, Jimena. Well, thank you, Rimasha. I'm very glad to have uh, all of you here. And I really thank, uh, especially to the speakers uh, on this occasion uh, for being with us. Uh, I, I appreciate also the participation of our friends of the Ministry of Economy in, in Mexico. Uh, as I told you before, the, the idea is to uh, make the, the newsletter a little bit bigger and include a, a kind of Arizona section so we can participate uh, all the uh, economic and business employees in, in the mega region. It's very important for us to be very, uh, very inclusive, and, and it's it's the the plan that we have. And as we all know, uh, the pandemic, the COVID nineteen uh, situation just uh, made uh, uh, made a, made us to have a lot of difficulties in all areas. The trade uh, between our countries diminished. Uh, we have. Uh, very negative consequence in, in many, many, many ways. And we saw the reduction 
of tourism, uh, not only uh, from Mexico to Arizona, but from Arizona to Mexico. So tools like the newsletter, uh, tools like database, uh, Mexico, Data Mexico, uh, are uh, aim to make a better or to improve this uh, situation. I hope uh, that we we uh, achieve this goal in the near future. Uh, we, we really think that if Arizona succeeds, Mexico succeeds. I think this relationship is a win-win and we are all involved. And well, I just want to, to thank uh, all of you and special, special thanks also for the economic and tourism promotion team of the council, which is led by, by Jimena Sotres. A special, special thanks to, to, as Glenn said, the best graphic designer in the world, Carmen Martinez, and also the participation of Karen Murphy in the edition of the, of the text. Thank you very much, all of you. Thank you. Gracias, Luis, y gracias, Sergio, por colaborar con nosotros. Thank you, Eric. Absolutely. Thank you, Luis and Sergio. Thank you very much. It's really interesting your, your, the USMCA uh, document that you presented. I was, I was, I'll send you an email. Ciao. Super. Sounds good. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. Take care.